Loosening up our art is a huge goal to many of us, but it's not that easy, is it? As we all know, as we try to loosen up our style, sometimes it just hits a roadblock. So in today's video, we're going to untangle this a little bit. We'll talk about what loose sketching is, and then we'll dive into five different exercises, which I'll talk you all the way through to fill up your sketchbook with fun and gradually looser sketches. So let's define what we're seeking to achieve. Sketching is broadly known as a sort of a quick process where we're seeking to make a draft of a scene or an unfinished feel to the work. In recent times, a sketch is a finished work of art, but we're still looking for that quick gestural and unfinished feel where it could develop onto something else, but it doesn't have to. It can in itself be a work of art. And sketching is what I call most of my creations. When we move to loose sketching, well, the looseness is about feeling comfy and confident in our techniques. It's much harder to create an explicit definition for. Our artwork becomes less about representing the scene, but more about having fun with our art, being more and more expressive, and perhaps making bigger and bolder decisions about how we transform the world onto our page. The fact that it is loose normally implies that it's not totally abstract either. So we're still trying to represent the scene, represent the world, or whatever it is in front of us. But it doesn't need to be perfect. In fact, if it was perfect, it wouldn't be loose anymore. And with that in mind, what we're going to explore now are five different little things, studies, exercises, techniques, whatever you'd like to call them, that we can fill our sketchbook with to work towards developing a looser style. I remember a looser style can mean loads of different things. It doesn't mean squiggly wobbly lines and splashy watercolours necessarily. It could mean tiny, it could mean simplifying, it could mean abstract colours, and it could mean whatever it is that you want it to mean. Time now to dive into idea one, and here we're creating a diptych. A diptych is where you have two paintings that sort of work together. And in this instance we're going to draw a scene, but on the left we are going to grossly oversimplify it. So I have this little scene which just happens to be from a small village called Tissington. And notice how I'm using bold lines and really simple shapes. On the right, we repeat this scene. And you might do this with something as simple as a tree, or something as simple as a couple of bushes, or even a person. I'm just using this village as a little example. In my little village, on the right, we've got wobbly lines, we've got loads of textures. My pen is much more active and mobile, and I'm holding it a little bit looser. All of these things are providing a different feel, a very different feel to the same scene, but hopefully the proportions are similar. So we can start to see that actually this scene is recognisable as the same thing, but very, very different. On the left, we'll start with some colours here, using flat and simple colours with a sort of medium-sized brush. This is a size 6 round brush. Applying these flat colours, we can create a certain look, which we can then fundamentally change on the right. Now we're applying more complicated colours, more watery, letting them bleed and blend, adding a little bit more vibrance, a little bit more interest. Now in all of this, you might think I'm saying that the right one is the only way to sketch, the only way to paint, but I'm absolutely not. All I want from this exercise is to just explore different ways to produce a loose image. The left is loose because it's so simple and flat. It's a little bit illustrative. The right is loose because it's got the looser, more vibrant colours and lines, but they are both perfectly viable. And the idea behind this loosening up exercise is to try doing things in different ways and see what you find most comfortable. Don't search for something clever or amazing, just find which you enjoy the most. So having done that, we can move on. And this time we're going to produce a, a scene which is really tiny. Now forgive me for a second while I produce a scene which isn't tiny. And this is a scene I've actually sketched on plein air. This is from Bath. And of course I'm doing it now in my studio. And one of the problems with not sketching small is we can get really stuck into the details. This is still a quick and loose sketch. But it took a remarkably long time. I've, I've sped it up here. And it's really hard to know when is enough enough. I've got so many windows, so many details, so many textures. I could keep going and going and going. But 
sometimes that stops us being loose and it takes us away from the goal that we're seeking. A really interesting, really fun way to get around this is to sketch tiny. So if I shrink this scene to a quarter of the size it was, instead of filling this whole page, it's going to just occupy the very centre of the page. It makes us make a lot of decisions. And I said at the beginning, in loose sketching, often the decisions, bold decision making is what is a feature of this art. We're no longer representing the world perfectly. So instead of representing it perfectly, we must have changed something. We must have decided to do something differently. If your art is tiny, well, the thing you're going to have to decide to do is leave out lots of the details. And yeah, to make it still represent the scene, it's going to have to be a interesting, clear and simplified version of the scene, perhaps focusing on little spots of contrast to suggest that detail. So this is a way to force yourself to get comfortable with the scene not looking perfect. And yeah, because it's tiny, it doesn't take long, and it tends to look really fun and cool. And you'll suddenly discover that actually you have multiple ways that you are capable of making the decisions, making this confident looking art whilst exploring different processes. Applying the colours to this is much the same. We can't do clever colours. If I tried to do those really complicated colours from before, it would get so busy and messy that we'd lose our shape. So instead I have to do those flat colours that we tried in the sort of left-hand scene in the last little exercise. And it actually works quite well. I think this is quite fun. I really enjoy it. I think the splashes as well, they're obviously a loose technique. I think the splashes add an awful lot and suggest so much going on around the scene. So have a go. Tiny art in a tiny sketchbook and see what happens. Number three is a way of loosening up our colour. So I'm going to really quickly just sketch a, a little imaginary scene. So these are some fields and some trees and hopefully you can see them emerging in front of you. Try doing a simple scene like this, even again just a couple of trees or a few houses in a row. Something where you've got distinct areas of your subject, areas of your page, that you can decide to apply colours to. Because what we're going to do now is not in any way reference reality with our colours. So I'm going to use some ink tense pencils, they're a little bit like watercolour pencils, and I've got a colour called Amethyst, I've got a colour called Paprika, and I probably think, hopefully, you'll agree with me that Amethyst and Paprika are not typical colours that you would find in fields, nor is a bright blue a typical colour that you would find in a tree, at least not as a leaf, obviously. Okay, yes, all these colours could be flowers, but here I'm, I'm trying to suggest as a more broad colour, these things are a bit abstract, they're not completely normal. Another thing would be a bright yellow sky. Really fun. Yes, you get yellow in skies, but not normally as a big block of colour. Having used my watercolour pencils to add these colours in different places, I can come back with a brush, activate them, and now we'll really see how abstract this is. But it still works. It still works because we have thought about it. We have to find our areas nicely, both with the application of the colour and with the sort of distinct line work. And so even though it's not real, and it pretty much can't be real, it's still a really fun and lovely way to sketch. And we could do this with any colours. We could decide to make it monochrome. We could decide to make it with different colour schemes, perhaps using a complementary colour scheme, like a blue and an orange, where when they meet, they become neutral, they become a grey. And just look how actually fun, actually effective this scene is, despite the fact that it's very loose, at least very loose in terms of the colours. They are in no way representing reality. So have a go. Just think of a scene. Maybe sketch it once in a real way. Maybe your house would be a good place to start, something you know well. And then just imagine what colour your house could be. Now to do something that many people find quite scary. We're going to go colour first. Now this is wet on dry. So our watercolours are hitting a dry page and that means that we can almost draw with them. So I'm using a small brush. Again, this is a small flat brush. And with that small flat brush, I'm just picking out really simple shapes with my watercolours. And this is an imaginary scene. It could be any little row of houses. And I'm imagining pushing myself to create these watercolour blocks, these watercolour shapes, 
and build up this scene without any pencil lines, without any ink lines, without those things that we normally rely on as sketchers to produce our scenes. And this is going to, again, force us to simplify and force us to become more comfortable with different aspects of our media. There's a couple of ways you could do this. Uh, you could just completely stick with the watercolours, or you could apply the watercolours first and then a little bit of ink after. I think both are very valid ways of doing it. And often, if I'm out and about sketching, I love to splash on my colours first and then find a little bit of structure after with my ink. It's a really free and flowing way to sketch. Now, when we're trying to develop a loosening up style, or a looser style to our art, what can be important is actually to push ourselves to do things a bit differently. So here, what's different is I'm being much more simple with my shapes. And it's really making my, my brain work, to be honest. How can I keep this really simple? How can I stop myself trying to make the colours run together? Uh, you can see I'm keeping little gaps between the colours. I'm being more controlled. Now, you might feel that that makes it therefore less loose, which in some ways it does. But in other ways, it's much looser because it's not got any sort of sense of reality with the textures. It's a very much more illustrative look. It's not my favourite look, but the point of doing little studies and exercises like this is to develop other ways of doing things, to see what else your media can do, which you wouldn't normally do. Coming back, just applying a tiny bit of structure with that ink. As I said earlier, my preferred way of sketching is with watercolour and ink. And I actually found applying my normal lines on top of this. I was surprised, surprisingly happy with how it looked. It wasn't as flat and boring as I was worried it might be. And I think it's a perfectly good way of sketching. I, I you know, as I say, it's not my favourite way. But explore different ideas and find for you what you find the most fun. That's what this exploration of loose techniques is all about. Now, last but not least, this is one of my absolute favourite things. And the previous one, perhaps, if I said that was a bit scary, then I think many people will find this even more so, perhaps even very scary. This is the idea of wet on wet sketching. So what I've done here is I've applied water to the page and just mopped up some of that surface water with a dry brush. Now coming in, this time with a much bigger flat brush. And we're going to just paint on that wet area. And I'm using simple colours, and they will flow, move and run together. You can see the edges soften as we put them down. Here we're exploring looseness in many ways. One, soft edges. You can't draw details at this stage at all, because when you put down a line of colour, it spreads and splurges and moves out. We're exploring looseness because we're exploring what the watercolours do as a medium, not exploring a scene so much. And all put together, it's a really free and flowing way to sketch, which I think is probably the fundamental definition of loose watercolours, which I personally believe in the most. Here, the page is now dry and I can come back in with a second layer of colour. I don't want to be too firm here, but we had all that wet on wet splurging out, and now is the opportunity just to apply enough detail or enough structure to it that it makes sense. So I'm trying to, I'm sort of gently drawing almost with my brush, little marks, just simple little marks to bring out that contrast and start to sort of show you that hopefully <laughs> this is a little church and that hopefully you agree that this church makes a bit of sense when we've just applied a second bit of colour on top. And again, hopefully, you'll have the confidence to go out there, explore what wet on wet sketching can do for you. Because I think if you're a loose watercolour artist or a loose ink and watercolour artist, this is one of the absolute must know techniques, um, which takes a lot of confidence to use. But when you have that confidence, you'll find it can absolutely dramatically and fundamentally change not just your art, but also how much you enjoy your art and how loose and fun that art becomes. So there you go. This is probably my favourite of the five techniques to try. 
But let me know in the comments down below, what are your favorites? Did you try all five exercises? Have you got others that I should bring out in a second video? Leave me a comment. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe and turn on the notifications so you're ready to hear about the next video when it comes out. I will see you in one of these videos next and happy sketching.